including all snaps, this was this offense's most favorite play. It was a very featured concept in garbage time when the backups were in, just, you know, bleed the defense dry. Um, in SEC play last year, it was... Um, it commanded about a 6% play share that that obviously dwindled in our meaningful minutes sample here. But let's not pretend that it didn't have a very, very important role in this offense. Even though counters eventually outrepped it, um, this play absolutely is tied to the hip with that type of design thanks to its deliberate zone flow that often gets the defense flowing one way and, you know, and makes them vulnerable to you know misdirection runs towards the other sides of the formation. So... We're in 12 personnel. I love this particular double wing set where both of our tight ends are off the line. Now, why do you like that, Clark? Because it gives us versatility without um, tipping the hand of our strength. The defense doesn't know which side of the formation we we prefer to favor. Now, obviously, there's going to be a side that is towards the field. But in terms of what we can do, we can run split zone to either side. We can run counter to either side. We can run inside zone with slide and flat RPOs to either side. And like I just mentioned, we can run outside zone to either side. So this is a very good job of Alabama getting a hat on a hat. When the defense is anticipating something towards the inside, um, we can beat them on the outside. Quite frankly, when they peak, they can be reached. And that's what happens on this play. So um, corners are giving us a whole lot of space. Now, there's a philosophy going around. Um, some teams teach do not block corners. They're small, puny players. Make them tackle in space against a big, brawny back like Najee Harris. So um, I have a little bit of a, a peel back towards our safety since this corner is so far back. And this can be a very good example of Najee Harris displaying his athleticism with a form of a um, hurdle here. So, but yeah, everybody on the line, we're all concerned with our play side adjacent gap. We're taking a much flatter path than, it, than if we were running an inside zone slam where we're trying to get some north and south and towards the second level. We're overly concerned with reaching and sealing towards our play side. So, um, Tight end will snake up to that backer. Tackle will seal him. Very good combo to the next level from our guard center as he takes on the nose. Same situation on the back side with our guard able to get up to the weak side linebacker and our tackle squeezing in that nose and our tight end taking, uh, taking care of that edge. Since this, um, this defender is too far away, we don't even concern with him since we're running to, towards the outside. So quarterback opens... With that angle, that is where we're stressing pre-snap. And since that is absolutely unhindered, that is the path we are going to continue to take. If this had been stuffed, maybe we look for a cutback inside. But since no one um, threatens that path, there we go. We get our seal. We get our um, receiver up on that safety. And since this corner is so far back, yeah, there's a whole lot of green grass for our fantastic back to take advantage of. Hurdles him, gets an explosive carry. There you go. So 72% success rate, second most successful concept on the ground for this offense in meaningful minutes.